Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. In today's video I'm doing a Hermione Granger fan art piece and I wanted to show you my entire process and yeah my thoughts behind the drawing. I will always start out a piece like this doing some research, looking at some pictures of the person I want to draw or getting inspired about certain poses or outfits or yeah seeing what I want to do for this piece. And I found this screen cap from the first movie, I think, or a rebuild of the, th the screen cap. You can't really see this exact scene, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but I wanted to, yeah, redraw that in my own way. I brought the picture into Photoshop and I just started out sketching the pose. And I wanted to slightly change it um, so it would not just be an exact study or copy of the drawing. Uh, of the photo um, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I just started out doing a very similar pose and um, just keeping it very close but then I decided to just twist the perspective just a little and um, to tilt so we are looking down on her in a way um, and I yeah started out sketching the approximate perspective how I wanted it to be and she's kind of sitting yeah, on the floor and we are practically standing next to her and looking down and she's like, hey, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm mixing um, a potion or something, I don't know. Um, yeah, I wanted to kind of challenge myself more with perspective and do things that, yeah, would be more interesting to look at because um, I'm only doing front view poses or I have been doing a lot of front view poses in the past few years um, and uh, yeah I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Mm, I did struggle a lot getting the likeness in her face. Um, I don't want it to be perfect but um, I want to at least have her resemble Hermione so that you can say oh, okay yes that's Hermione. It doesn't have to be perfect but I want to at least kind of yeah have her look like her so it's believable. Um, yeah I struggled with getting the face right and um, the face is the most important thing in an illustration so that was very important to me to get her to look very cute and um, all the reference images that I found of Hermione were where she looked very grumpy and um, I wanted to keep that grumpy look but also have her smile in a friendly way so the illustration would be more positive I guess. The hair was pretty easy to do and you can see me um, doing not her bangs but the hair do she has in later movies. I do really like her bangs but um, I feel more comfortable drawing older girls so I wanted to kind of draw the Hermione from the fourth or fifth movie or something like that in that age category because it felt more comfortable. Um, now you can see me struggle with the hands and I had such a problem getting them right um, in perspective and um, I didn't really want to copy the hands from the original photo because um, the perspective had changed and also they, they looked kind of weird and um, if you are holding something in real life um, it makes sense to you but if you draw the hands exactly like that in an illustration it can tend to not make as much sense if that makes sense so um, I wanted to make her hand look elegant and nice but still in perspective so that was something very important to me and something I struggled with a lot. Sometimes there are just these drawings that you keep erasing stuff and keep redrawing stuff and um, it's just not turning out right and you're struggling with the drawing and the lines only for this illustration took me two and a half hours because I struggled so much so much with the pose because it was in perspective and with the hands and everything um, but sometimes when you are working on an illustration like that the most important thing is to keep going and to try again if you feel like the hand is not working out just erase the hand and start with a different pose just change it up completely and see what else you can do um, and also this is a very in perspective pose illustration um, 
but I actually not really did any logical underwork for the pose. I think that's why I struggled so much. I just kind of winged it and did it how I thought it would work and yeah, just approximated everything. So that's probably why I struggled a little later on. Um, I should have done more groundwork and be more precise with the pose and with the perspective lines and everything. So yeah, that was something um, I had to kind of deal with later on, but it was a lot of fun to draw hair. I really like the Harry Potter films and I have to rewatch them again. I have rewatched them a couple of times before, um, but I really want to yeah, do it again and live, relive the magic again. Um, yeah, I also really like the soundtrack and I included some something very similar from an artist on YouTube. Um, I'm linking them down below. And they did this really relaxed Harry Potter themed kind of piece um, that I really like. Um, uh, you can see that if you are draw something in if you if you draw something in perspective, that things like this cauldron can really help you because it has a lot of ellipses, and ellipses are what will make the perspective more believable. Because if you see the cauldron from straight ahead there will be very flat ellipses because you're looking straight ahead but um, when you see it from above there will be a much rounder ellipse and that way it will make the pers perspective more believable and that's something that really helped me yeah pull it off i guess um, I wanted to kind of pick, pick the colors from the original photo, but still make it something I would be comfortable with. I do tend to use very light desaturated colors because I'm um, very graphic design oriented and I always want to choose colors that will be printable, if that makes sense. So um, only CMYK compatible colors, those are the ones I will be choosing. Um, so the print, if I would be to make one, will look exactly like the digital piece. So yeah, that's why my <laughs> pieces are always kind of look kind of dull, but I really like the look. So yeah, if I'm to edit any picture or something, I will always desaturate it a little bit because that's just what I like, I guess. Yeah, I kept all the colors just like in the picture and um, the uniform and I wanted to change the color of the potion to a bright green because I'm um, later on I wanted to add this kind of shine or glow from the potion that will would be affecting her and her clothes as well and yeah just shine on her to give it this kind of cool effect um, usually I would do separate layers for everything for the little potions and for the main, but I just kind of kept everything on one layer and just approximated the transparencies of the bottles. For the skirt, I did make a separate layer because later on I wanted to add a plate texture, texture that I had been working with um, before and I really like the way these kind of free textures can work on your illustration and make it more realistic and yeah um, give this kind of interesting texture to your illustration yeah if that makes sense so yeah here you can see me add the texture and um, just pull down the saturation add the background to her and then I start with the shading and I kept it very natural very simple at first I wanted to kind of um, oh Mila Mila's dying in the background again whenever I record a voiceover Mila just suddenly has the urge to scream very loud. Um, I don't know why she has just been fed and we had just, an, we just went out for a nice walk and I don't know what she's, she's missing right now. Um, well, yeah, I kept the shadows in a desaturated purple and at first I wanted to add this kind of shine to the illustration, um, but I later on deleted these kind of light effects on her skin and everything because it looked too fuzzy if that makes sense and just in the end added this green shine on top of everything to make it more simple and 
um, when I colored her hair, hey Mila, when I colored her hair, I felt really confused about her hair color. In some movies it's more reddish and in some movies it's very dark brown. So yeah, I just kind of tried to get the best of both worlds, if that makes sense. So I did use brown, but also reddish highlights to kind of make it, yeah, look something in between. For the clothes, I also used a purple shadow and just very simple. I didn't overcomplicate anything too much with the shading. I colored in the lines, also kept it very simple, very easy, very natural, because I don't want this to be a fantastical illustration. It's just supposed to be um, an everyday situation with Hermione, if that makes sense. So if you are kind of going to school to Hogwarts with her, you can see her in the bathroom mixing this potion. Um, yeah, here you can see me at the glow and also the Gaussian blur layer and some small green particles to just make the potion look more interesting. Okay, and this is the final illustration. Um, I really like how this turned out and I'm super happy I pulled through and that I continued with the perspective and just read it the hands as often as it took so it could get um, accurately and so I would like them. I want to also make a special announcement. Uh, I have just launched my Patreon and I want to use this platform to kind of connect with you guys on a deeper level, if that makes sense. And we have a smaller crowd and yeah, be more intimate and I can share my sketches, my sketchbook pages just there and also PSDs if, in case you want to kind of look through them, look through my layers. That's something that's not possible here on YouTube or on Instagram. There you can uh, download files, which is re really cool and um, you could also I will also upload speed paints so you can download them and um, I wanted to kind of go through the different tiers with you guys so there's an early bird for three dollars a month where you get access to my patreon only feed the sneak sneak peeks and updates so I will always post my drawings on there first and then one or two days later also on Instagram and Twitter you will get wallpapers, coloring pages, and I will also sprinkle in some beautiful shots of Mila every now and again. Um, the Apprentice um, is you can get early access to commissions, so I'm open for commissions. I will at first ask my Patreons if they want to get one and then I will ask um, on Instagram and on Etsy and so on. And, and with that tier you can also get PSD files, um, I rest images and step by steps of my art. The Enchantress tier is for an exclusive video. So um, if you guys are missing something here on my YouTube and you want to get some extra content, very specific extra content, like for example, um, me showing a specific technique in real time and, and explaining it, for example, how I shade skin or something like that, you can request that on my Patreon and I will do the topic just uh, the video just for you and upload it just to my Patreon so you guys can see it. Um, the Crystal Gazer is 10% discount on my commissions and you will also get a monthly exclusive print and sticker and also a monthly surprise. So for example for this month I'm thinking of doing some Brett's stickers for my Patreon so there's more than one then of course um, but at least one print and at least one sticker a month. And then the highest tier, the High Priestess, um, you will get an exclusive video critique or advice um, on your illustration. So you can send it to me and you can um, tell me kind of a main aspect you want to get help on. And I will make a small video for you where I try to give you advice or critique on your illustration and where we together can kind of work on your illustration style or your techniques and where I will be helping you as best as I can. Okay, <laughs> those are all the tiers. Um, with Patreon, it's that, um, yeah, I've always wanted to do one and now I will be moving soon. So there will be some extra costs coming, coming straight at us. Um, and I have to pay double rent for a couple of months, w months which is very nerve-wracking and very expensive for me because I don't have any money so yeah it would be awesome if you could support me in this way 
If you can't, that's absolutely fine. There's no necessity for you to support me on Patreon. I will still be posting the same amount of content on all my platforms. The Patreon stuff is just to support me and to kind of get the, these extra perks and extra benefits from me. So yeah, just by watching my videos and by commenting and yeah, by liking my Instagram pictures, you are already supporting me enough. So yeah, this is just an extra thing. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about this forever. Um, I hope you are having an amazing day and I will be seeing you very soon in my next video. Bye!